Hey folks, it's Riffgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Stop and Back. I am just driving up this way to see if we can get across, well, just, just to see what the route is like going up this way. And we're going to deliver the last of the potatoes to the beef unit, and then once we've done that, we have a muck spreading to get started with. So we can just get up over that bank there without any problems, and then we come out onto the road. It should be just a clean, easy run along this road all the way round to the beef unit. So while we're traveling sedately through the countryside, where would you like me to go next? Where would you like me to spend the next four-week session? Do we stay right here on Stappenbach? Do we move to South Mountain Creamery? Do we go to Pacific Inlet Logging? Uh, PGR, Brusda, or Lossberg. It's your vote, it's your game. Head into the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why, and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. And if you want to know a little bit more about any of those maps, there are links to each and every single one of them down below. And no, I didn't just run over that pedestrian, he jumped out of the way at the very last minute, which was quite convenient, really. Um, it was rather fortunate for him as well, I think. Um, but yeah, we, we, we didn't run over any pedestrians, so fear not. Now, if I get this one... Oh, actually, am I going the right way now? I've got a feeling I may have... No, no, I haven't taken a wrong turn. I am going the right way. I will meet you over at the beef unit. We can get these emptied out, and then we are doing some muck spreading. Our oh, wonderful cows in here. I am curious how long the potatoes are going to last. We've got quite a few in here now. The cows are active and they're actually doing things, which is a wonderful step in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. So I just bring that up round there. And we know that they've started doing something and that they're using up the potatoes. You've got to back your potato trailer in here like this and then you've got to do the force tip option, not just the normal tip because uh, you don't have an option for normal tip. So force tip into there and then they get used up as and when. So at the moment we have 30,000 litres of, well almost 31,000 litres of wheat. We've got 41,500 litres of potatoes. Uh, water, we've got 20 mother cows and then we've got um, grass and straw and everything else. We've got everything that we need in here. So now all we've got to do is just keep an eye on them and periodically check and make sure that everything is still working really well for them. And, yeah, we'll, we'll worry about that another time. So, the next thing that we want to do is some muck spreading. We're going to spread muck on the two arable fields that we've got. And once we've done that, our next task will be... Well, I'm not actually entirely sure. Once we've done the muck spreading bit... I mean, yes, we've got to keep the cows sort of full of various foods that they might need. But... We don't really have a particular task that we want to do next because I'm going to do the muck spreading but I wasn't actually planning to do any planting until spring. I was going to do spring planting for this map. Um, which means that kind of we've gone into autumn. I mean winter is going to be coming up fairly soon. So maybe we'll just sort of advance time by a little bit and start doing some winter tasks. We've got... Um, I know that there are a few people who like me to do a bit of forestry work, so I am going to look at the forestry on this map, and we're going to see what we can do with that. And I'm also wanting to, so yeah, do a bit of logging, chainsawing. I'm not entirely sure where. I would actually like to cut down a few of these trees up here. And also, right back the road going back towards the beef unit, there's a few more I'd like to cut down down there. We'll see how long it's going to take. Um, there is a particular... U um, uh, item, vehicle that I like to use, a uh, machine that I like to use for doing this sort of job and it is really good. We're going to need to empty the milk at some point soon as well because uh, I don't think it auto sells at all. I think all milk has to be taken over manually and I did want to use a lorry to do that but I don't know if we've got a lorry available. And let's just have a look at our beef a minute. What was that? Uh, oh, that's our, that's our expenditure. It's a little bit high, really. It, 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 it does seem a bit high, a bit excessive. Uh, water for... Okay, we got water in for pigs, but we, we don't have anything else for those. So, we can ignore the health bar. That's apparently it's a bug with seasons. And um, the bit that we want to worry about is this bit down here. 
We got everything that we could possibly want for the milk tank has only got 1100 liters So we don't need to worry about the milk at the moment either. I mean, we've only got 75 cows So it's, it's not like a, a huge thing now We've got that one over there. We've got a bucket down there and we have a JCB wheel loader right here So let's just take this one and We'll unhitch that and then we'll bring this one back over this way and we're going to start loading up that muck spreader. I've been, I haven't used this muck spreader at all yet. I haven't tested it, I haven't looked at it, I haven't seen it at all. I've been really looking forward to using it, right? I, since I've seen this one, I've been really looking forward to using it. And I want to use it in the time lapse series as well. Uh, but I haven't bought any cows yet, so I'm, I'm still waiting to buy the cows so that I can get the manure for um, filling it up in the time lapse series so we're going to use it in this series right here there we go the first of the muck going in there let's just make sure yes it does actually fill up correctly that is excellent okay we'll bring this one back round. so for this one here it doesn't have like a separate pen or anything you've got to clean out the cows yourself and i do quite like this i think this is quite a good touch to the map um, making you actually clean them out yourself because I mean most of them it sort of appears in a Area beside your cows or very close to your cows and that's great and all but Quite frankly, it's not I mean well, yeah, I suppose you know you do go and you clean the cows out every day um, Or some people do they'll clean the cows out every day some people clean them out every few days some people just pile in straw into a pen and, you know, don't clean the cows out very much. Um, and then sort of have a big clear out at the end of the year. There's different ways of doing it. I've seen it done in all ways, to be perfectly honest. Um, one place I worked has very small pens. And rather than filling these pens up with straw and just keep piling the straw up and up and up and up, they clean them out every single day and so by the end of the entire year or by the end of the winter when they should be empty at the, you know when a lot of um cattle pens are completely full theirs aren't theirs have got like a little bit you've got one or two muck spreaders worth sort of towards the back of the shed because they clean they'd scrape out the front half of it every single day and then put in a bit of fresh bedding so you get like a bucket full half a bucket full of um, manure going out every single day w that would be put into a muck spreader and then taken out and spread whenever the um, weather allowed for it and I mean the system worked the system did work but it was very labor intensive because you would keep moving between all these doors keep driving into the um, the calf pens and it was mostly for young stock um, and so yeah it while it worked it was probably the most labor intensive way of looking after cattle that i've ever experienced and i have gone and i have sort of worked on quite a number of farms so i've seen a number of different methods of doing it and yeah i would definitely say it's probably the most labor intensive one that i found that i ever worked on and so there is that very much against it and no i'm not driving through a cow it's a figment of your imagination um, he's he's actually moved out of the way like most sensible cows would um, I've worked in places where they would clean the whole pen out every three or four weeks and that sort of worked fairly well because they would move the animals into another pen or stick them out in the yard empty everything out and put it on the um, stockpile usually they would take it out to the field and they put it in lines along the edge of the field but this farm worked organically and so what you do is you take this stuff out of the field and you don't spread it straight away um with well not i'm not going to say all organic farms but a lot of them they don't spread it all straight away what they do is they put it in lines <laughs> i'm carrying the cow with me <laughs> i didn't even know you could do that okay that was pretty good um yeah you don't take the Oh, there he goes. There he goes. We're lifting the cows up. That's actually quite cool. Um, yeah, you, you don't load the muck up and go out and spread it like you do with um, most conventional sort of methods of farming. 
um, you leave it in lines on the edge of the field and you compost it and the way that works is that it gets left there for quite a while and then gets um, turned you have this huge great big machine it's kind of it's difficult to explain it's kind of like imagine the arch of a doorway and you know it's kind of like that doorway right in front of us imagine a machine that kind of just looked like that one great big iron bar that was up and cross and down on each side and a wheel on the bottom on each side so you're basically just pulling along one big archway right and it's literally that that's kind of what it looked like you got one bar up and then another one that sort of curved i mean yeah it was a bit curved over the top and then one bar down that side and you attach the tractor on one side over here and then in the middle along the bottom you had another you had this big sort of round drum that had a load of spikes on it and that would spin round and you got a trailer you got a line of manure up across the field so it's coming up across here and you unfold this machine and you present it at the end of the heap and then you turn it on it starts rotating its drums rotating around like this making make you seasick now and then you start just very slowly moving forwards up the row you just creep forward and the entire row will fit in in between the two downward bars in between the two wheels on each side and it would be turned over by this drum and what that's doing is it's sort of stirring the whole heap up and um moving it round and it helps turn everything into compost i'm not quite sure how i think the way you turn into compost you're supposed to do that to oxygenate it or something um I was never quite entirely sure, and it's the only place I ever worked on that did it, so I didn't really pay too much attention to why we were doing it at the time. It was, I, But I believe to properly compost something, it needs to be oxygenated rather than anaerobic rather than an anaerobic environment um, like you do with silage. You don't want to ferment it. You want to rot it. Um, so you want it's, it's to get the oxygen into it, I think. All right, don't quote somebody out there probably knows a bit more about it than I do but that's what we used to do um, on this one place and we would empty out the cattle pens every three or four weeks and um, you know if, if the if the weather was permit if the weather was permitting we would empty out the cattle pen and then we would drive up across into whatever field we were storing it in and um, you know just just tip it out in a great big long line and then every month or so you go along and you you run this machine up through i don't think we used to stir it up very much in the winter i think it was more in the summer when we had lines of stuff out there that you'd get more of it tipped out um you would still do some in the winter it would still be stirred up in the winter but not quite just not quite as much as we did in the summer um but yeah, that's what we used to do with that one. And then a lot of other places I worked sort of did it, you know, the more conventional way where you just empty everything out in the spring and go and spread it all out on your fields. Or do it all in the autumn. Yeah, be one or the other. Right, now, I've never used this machine before, so let's just see if we've got any other options we've got turned on. It doesn't have anything to open it or unfold it, so we will just turn the thing on to start with. Let's go. Ooh. We've got a nice... Oh, hang on. That wheel came right out. Look at that. The wheel opened out when we started moving. Oh, when I um, put the thing on, I didn't actually expect that. Quite sure why it's come out there. But, look at this. It's spreading, and it's actually going quite a long way as well. It's the, the quantity in the spreader is not deteriorating at a tremendous rate of knots. This is quite cool. Okay, I like this machine. I do. I really like this machine. And yes, it's a little weird, but it's also very, very cool. So we can bring that one up through there. We've got a... It's this little bit here that goes a little bit wonky. We bring that in through there. We don't need to worry about it too much, I suppose. And we get a better look at it once we start going along the top end of the field. Not, the, not against the trees here. Once we've gone down this side here and we go along the top end parallel with the cattle... Uh, we get a much better view of the machine and we've got it it's spreading sufficiently slowly that uh, we should be able to do that we've missed a big chunk there but that was just the way that I turned and because of the trees being in the way I couldn't see this is why I don't like trees near the end I I like trees in real life I like to have trees everywhere but I really don't like trees in this game at all 
Now, we should be able to get a decent look if we come up round here. So I can spin that one. Oh, I see. Right. It turns quite sharp when you come up round the top, so it does make it look a little bit different. But there we go. There is our trike muck spreader, and it looks very cool. There is no denying that that machine does actually look very cool. Even the most cynical among you will have to agree that that machine looks pretty cool. So let's try some hired help. Let's not try that sort of hired help. Let's do that. And there we go. We go to normal. Now, if I press X, does it unfold? No, it doesn't. Right. I do that. The wheels come out as you start up. Now, which way is he going to turn? Is he going to turn? Yes, he is turning the correct way. Excellent. Oh, that is brilliant. Look at the way those wheels... Oh, no. Because he's shut off on the end, the wheel has gone back in. I'm guessing that the wheel would come out and it would stay out while you're operating in the field. It wouldn't be something that would be um, retracted continuously at the end of each row. Because uh, otherwise it's going to cause problems. Um, I'm assuming that the wheel goes out... Partly, I mean, I. the only thing I can think of is compaction issues, right? The wheel comes out like that to avoid compaction. That's why you've got a single wheel at the front. None of the wheels are in line. We don't have any wheels in line here at all. That one comes in around like that, but I don't think it would be retracted as he goes around the corner. And I think he would stay out, which would you wouldn't have compaction issues. And that's what I think that's all about. It's just to so that you don't have wheels in line and you're not getting compaction. And that's the same reason when you've got a sugar beet harvester working up across the field, uh, you'll see them working in the crab. They have the wheels in the crab formation, so the machine is sort of sliding along uh, sideways, looking diagonal at the crop. The reason that they do that is to avoid compaction. You don't have any wheel travelling on the same part of the field as any other wheel, and therefore you don't have any compaction issues. So that would be a really good thing, Whereas, because if, you know, if you've got a tractor and you've got a muck spreader, all the wheels are in line, so you're, you're compressing just one spot on the field rather than spreading the weight out across the whole thing. And spreading the weight out across the whole thing for the actual field itself is it's far, far better to do it like this. But there we go. Let's have a look in cab a minute. Let's see what this is like. Can we... We can't see anything. We've got a mirror there, but, I mean, the mirror is not very good. I mean, I'm guessing that this would be run using GPS. It looks pretty good in here. There's no denying that it does actually look pretty good. This seems like the sort of machine that would be very cool to actually drive. I'd quite enjoy doing that, I think. Maybe one day I will actually have to see if I can um, get a ride in one of these. I think that would be quite an entertaining thing to try and do. I'll have to, I'm going to have to look this up now. I'm going to go and look on YouTube and see if I can find some videos of self-propelled muck spreaders working in fields. Because I, there's bound to be some. Tractor Spotter has probably got some. For those of you who aren't aware, um, I've, I've had Tractor Spotter in my recommended channels list for quite a long time. And he did take a very long break. He didn't post any videos for probably, I think it was about a year. And nothing happened. And we sort of, you know, the general assumption was that he had moved on to Pastures New and decided to stop posting. Then he came back with all kinds of new footage. And it looks like he has spent the last year of his life going around the world. Because it's not just from where he is in the Netherlands. There's definitely material coming up that has been filmed in other countries. Uh, so it looks like he has gone out and he has gone and collected all kinds of incredible footage of all kinds of incredible machines. And he's now posting them very regularly on his YouTube channel so you can go and have a look at them. So there is a, if you go to my recommended channels list you'll find Tractor Spotter in there. He's got a whole load of new material on there for those of you who weren't aware and did enjoy his previous videos. I've got a feeling he does have a video of a self-propelled muck spreader. I don't know, though. He may not. Um, I know I've seen one somewhere, and I'm not sure if it was his channel or someone else's. i definitely seen some, of, of, like, some different types of muck spreading going on on his channel, and some of it does look quite impressive, you know, the really big machinery and stuff like that. 
Um, I am certain that I've seen a self-propelled one. And I really do want to say that it's on his channel, but it might not be. It, it could very well be someone else's. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'll, I will investigate at some point. Stick a link in the comment section down below if you know of one. And I will give it a, um, a like. And if I've... Normally, if there is a link in the description... Well, let's say normally. Always. If there's a link in the description, I will have posted it. Right? I put the stuff in the description. That's me. That's always me. If you happen to see a link posted by Frithgar in the comment section, that is not me. Now, it hasn't happened for quite a while. YouTube seems to have been able to clamp down on this a little bit better um, lately because I haven't seen it turning up on a lot of channels that used to have this. You know, you'd get plagued with it sometimes. I did have it for, you know, I have had it on and off. If there's a link if it looks like I've posted a link, it's not me, right? I, I never, ever post links in the comment section. I just don't do it. I might very, very rarely post a link as a direct response to a question. Usually, I don't do that. Just to avoid confusion, I don't do that. So, very, very occasionally, I might for whatever reason, but um, no. that would It would only be a reply, and it would be a link... Um, specific to a conversation I'm having with a one person so it would only really be relevant to them um no uh, and normally I would recommend that they contact me through Facebook and then I can send links um via private message on Facebook or something like that I don't like putting links in the comment section because it can lead to confusion if we do get a nasty bot or anything like that turn up and start causing troubles uh, you know, it's, it's generally it's, it's a bad thing. So if you see a link in the description down below, then I've posted it. If you see a link in the comment section down below, um, it's almost, well, I haven't posted it, right? If, if it's just a comment that's been posted by me, it's not by me. I haven't posted that comment. I don't do that. I don't post random comments with links. So if you do see it, never ever click on it and uh, report it as well. You know, let me know. Post a comment. Let me know. Um, however it might be, and then I, I get rid of them. Usually YouTube these days will pick them up and they're automatically filtered out anyway. These um, are the bots that post these dodgy links and stuff. Um, they're normally removed and, and cleared out. However, if someone else is posting a link, it never gets pre-approved. And this is one of the things that's helping to filter these out. Or 99% of the time it doesn't get pre-approved. Right? It's helping to filter these things out. So... If there is a link in the comments down below, chances are I've already approved it. And I will usually put a like, a heart, on a comment that contains a link to show that I've seen it and I've approved that comment. If you see one that has got the heart on it from my channel, then you know that I've actually already checked it and it should be safe. Right, so long as it's not like been edited afterwards or something like that. But usually if it's edited afterwards, it then goes back and it has to wait for approval once more. Which is a very cool thing. It's something that I quite like. It's a, a little feature of YouTube. That, that it's a way that they've sort of gotten around all these bots that were plaguing all of the channels. Um, and it, it generally makes things better. So, rather a, a long-winded way of getting to the point. <laughs> I do apologise. Um... If you have a link to a video showing one of these trikes or another self-propelled muck spreader, post the link. It will almost definitely have to wait for me to approve it. But once I do approve it, and I will put a heart on it as well to show people that I've actually, you know, this is one that I've approved and it's there. Then you can go and have a look. You can go and see about the... Um, the, the muck spreading and you see that the, um, the, the machine in action. It would be pretty cool if we can find a couple of videos that have got these on there. Uh, so if anybody wants to do that, I would be hugely grateful. And have you noticed normally you can't fill everything all the way up, right? You, it's not possible to fill the buckets all the way up. You never get 100%. But this compost is filling 100%. I've never seen that before. Never, ever, ever have I seen it go 100% on every single bucketful. 
So I don't know what wizardry and witchcraft this is, but there's something strange going on here. I'm going to try, because normally you can tip anywhere with anything. Okay. That tips anywhere, right out onto the floor over there. That's, um, it looks a little bit different to what it does on the top bit. And I'll gather that bit. Let's see if this now fills all the way up again. Because it might not. It might now decide that it doesn't like filling all the way up. So put that down. And right, five, nine, eight, four. Mind you, it's not filled all... It's, it's, it looks like it's gathered everything up off the floor. So maybe something fell through onto the floor. I, I, I don't really know. Right now, I'm a little bit confused about all of this. It is, it is definitely witchcraft. There's definitely witchcraft involved. There's got to be. Bring that one down in there. This... Um, how big is this thing that we've got right here? We've got 59,000 litres left on that heap. So how much can we put into this muck spreader? We must be able to put a fair bit in here. Ah, there we go. We are now full. We'll have a look in a second and we'll see how much we can put in it. If I bring this back over here and I go to tip it out, it's not going to... Nope, it doesn't fill the heap back up. So you can scoop up from the heap and then it actually and and tip it out. I've done this before with um, well with a with with, um, with the muck heap in Dowland Farm. I used to do this. You'd tip it out, and then you'd have the the muck heap sort of generating muck. But at the same time, you've tipped into the same spot as the muck heap, and it doesn't actually count it. So, you, although it says on the the number that you've got less on there. Um, That'll go to 100. We've actually got a bucket and a half tipped here as well that we'll also be able to scoop up. It's a way that you can get like a little bit extra in there. 38,000 litres we get in here. So we're going to run this up to the field and we'll see what we can get with this one. We Apparently this works a little bit differently. When you're using the compost, it behaves in a slightly different way to the standard material. Um, just just the standard manure in there. If you're doing the normal muck spreading, it goes at like a, a set speed. But apparently you go slower across the field when you're using compost. So I don't know if it's with everything or if it's just with one or two machines or what. But we're about to find out because we're going to take this. We've got, we've got a little bit left over on the other field and then we've got this one here to do. There is also that triangle field that we own that we haven't done anything with yet. So we can have a look at that one as well. So we'll bring this up through here. There is... Oh, no, that's where we travelled. No, it's not. Why is it overlapped? Oh, no, it's just there is a little bit of a gap there where it didn't quite spread properly. That's all. All right, let's try it here. Let's just go right here. We'll, we'll start spreading. Okay, I love that. I actually... I, 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 I really, really love that new texture. It's much, much darker, isn't it, with the compost? That is very cool. I love it. There we go. Spread that out. On Look at this. I mean, yes, you don't actually have the spreading animation with this, which is a little bit of a shame, um, but we do have the compost going out onto the field, which is very, very cool. I love this. I really do. I actually genuinely love this. It is awesome. <laughs> that is brilliant. Right. We'll stop there a second. Here we go. Right. And we'll have a look on the map. So that we can go back through. Here we go. And then growth and soil composition right here. Okay. So everything is now spread with fertilizer. Because I don't have... Uh, I got single layer fertilizer. That's all I've got. Right. So that field there, we could spread fertilizer on it if we wanted to. Or we could just leave. I, I don't know what we're going to do with that one yet. We just want to spread a little bit onto this field down here. Okay. It's very rough right there. Very bouncy. Not sure if it's supposed to be that bouncy. Right, let's start on this. And go on around this field. Um, yeah, I know that we've got... Uh, what is it? We've got lime coming in FS19. Now, I don't know what the properties of the lime is going to be and what the requirements are going to be for spreading it on the field or anything like that. I kind of hope that there is an additional thing like compost as well, but I, I, I don't really know what would happen with that. Uh, but the lime has got me very interested. I'm very, very interested in this lime and seeing what it does and how it works. 
The only downside that I can think of for the Lime is going to be in regards to recording the time-lapse. Because, unfortunately, when it comes to the time-lapse... Is that actually... That's like going almost right out onto the road. Oh, it doesn't quite go out onto the road. Um, when it comes to recording the time-lapse, things that have got high contrast doesn't work very well with the time lapse. Now this is nothing that we've got any control over, it's to do with the bit rate. And I've got the bit rate way, way higher than any other video I ever do. And I record in a uh, very, very high, but the highest bit rate that I can get with any of my recording software and with any of my um, editing and, and so on and so forth, right? I have insanely high numbers on the bit rates and it is absolutely as high as it can possibly go and it, it cannot go any higher um, and you still get patches where it goes all blocky and um, poorly textured but this kind of just an accepted thing with time lapse I've not yet seen any time lapse where it never happens and I try to avoid this by avoiding anything that has too high a contrast in texture this right here whilst it looks very cool i think would cause absolute havoc with the visuals uh, because not because of the dark bits but because of the light bits mixed in with it because it's such a high contrast it would require a lot more um bits per frame and that's going to cause you some major issues so i think this right here what you're viewing right now um, it's probably gone a little bit blocky just on this, but if it were to be in time-lapse, it would not be looking very good at all. It would look rather unpleasant. Um, so I try to avoid doing too much of that. You do get it on potatoes. I've noticed that potatoes are particularly bad for this um, because, you know, the potato texture is quite high contrast, isn't it? You get, a, um, you, you get the potatoes in the field and they are white on quite a dark background and that does the same thing you have the same effects coming through and it causes some fairly like major um picture lag and um this i can't remember what it's called now there is there is actually a particular name for it and i can't for the life of me remember what this act, this particular name is called that looks very cool that looks good so coming up here uh, with not putting it onto stubble does actually seem to be pretty good because it's giving us an even layer it's just going from um the light brown to the dark brown that's actually going to that wouldn't cause like serious issues with the um the, with the recording or with the feedback and it shouldn't cause any issues on this recording either that should actually look a lot better than the previous field at least i think it will um compression artifacts that's what it is it's compression artifacts is what they're called and this is just a thing with digital media. You get these compression artifacts, whatever. It's like the big squares where the picture goes really, um, like, strange with all these blocky images everywhere. And there's nothing that we can do about it. You know, it's, it's the absolute plague of all media. And, like, TV, uh, that they, they constantly have to deal with this. And, like, games producers as well. I've seen... Um, videos released by giants that themselves they you know when they do the in-game footage they get compression artifacts coming up on some of the in-game footage and I've seen this com I've seen these compression artifacts coming up on some of the videos that giants have released and it just sort of fills me with an immense feeling of relief knowing that if a large professional studio like that cannot eliminate all the compression artifacts then the fact that i get rid of most of them it's not quite up to full professional studio standards um but it, you know it, it's close enough the fact that i can get close enough to their kind of level makes me feel very proud makes me feel very pleased with myself knowing that you know i haven't like completely failed at it it's 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 doing all right so yeah and the lime the spring brought in i'm a little bit concerned about this because I've used Lime before in FS15. I had a map where Lime had been added in and it's white and it left this white on the field. And it didn't do it like this in a layer. It did it just kind of sort of sprinkled out. And 
it so it ended up with a very very high contrast layer being applied you had the dark soil underneath and then you had the white on the top and you could see the two it was just kind of spread out kind of looked a bit it ended up looking a bit like the stubble texture from the top down um which was great and it was really cool that you got to put lime on the field i mean it only acted like fertilizer but it was you know something for a bit of variety which was really awesome um it yeah it, it it was horrible it looked absolutely terrible my the, the video any video that had the lime in it it just looked awful the compression artifacts like the whole thing was just like one big block it was terrible so i stopped i didn't do very much lime i sort of did it as a, a one-off to look at it but then i kind of stopped doing it because of how bad it looked it really did it looked absolutely like really insanely bad you i i was genuinely surprised at just how awful it looked because of the uh, the compression artifacts and that's the bit that sort of made me start researching the compression artifacts a lot more than i had done previously and i'd sort of looked at it but i hadn't really sort of put in enough effort into looking into them and what was causing them and so on so um it did sort of cause me to start looking into them way back in fs15 Right, I think we're going to have to go in cab on here. Might just make it a little bit easier to get home. Got an indicator going, I think. Right, that's off. Um, so, anyway, we have kind of run out of time for today's episode. We're going to do a little bit more muck spreading in our next episode, and then we're going to start fast-forwarding time and maybe start cutting down a few trees. We've got some cattle that we need to take care of, although most of our cattle at the moment seem to be doing all right. Our main thing that we want to do next is a little bit of forestry work and i'm not entirely certain how i'm going to go about doing the forestry work at the moment um is something that i'm going to have a look at when we um yeah when we get there i yeah, like there's a, there is a few trees that i want to remove and i'll probably try and get a couple of um use a couple of the mods that um chop the stuff out really really quickly but um other than that i'm not entirely certain at the moment so let's get this one loaded up again because we will we'll do finish doing our field up the top there and then i would like to go and do a quick bit on the grass field down the bottom the big grass field uh, i won't worry about the potato field up the other end although I, well it, it depends how much of this we got left we'll so we'll wait and see on that point but anyway uh, my weekly question for this week well for this month now it's a monthly question where do you want to go for the next four weeks stint? Do you want to stay here on the back? Do you want to go to PGR Brusda? Do you want to move on to South Mountain Creamery? Do you want to go to Lossberg? Or do you want to go to Pacific Inlet Logging? It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. And if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head into the... Uh, hang on, hang on. Sorry, I had a phone call. Right, um, so yes, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.